Welcome to Buff Zone. My name is Kyle Ringo. I cover the University of Colorado football team for the Daily Camera newspaper. This week we're pulling a little bit of an audible. Neil Welk, our columnist, is out of the office taking care of some personal stuff, so our basketball beat writer, Ryan Thorburn, has agreed to join us and talk a little football this week. Ryan, the Buffs are going to uh, Austin, Texas to play the number two team in the country this week. How do the Buffs get a win against the Longhorns? Well, Kyle, uh, I think the first step that needs to take place is Colt McCoy is going to have to slip in the shower at the team hotel on Friday night. <laughs> uh, I've saw, had a chance to see this guy live for the first time in Laramie earlier this season, and uh, in my opinion, he's going to win the Heisman this year. He's a great player. He turns some sacks on third and long into touchdowns. Uh, he's got all the weapons surrounding him. So far, he's stayed healthy. So. A healthy Colt McCoy equals a victory over CU. I don't think the Buffs have any chance of uh, knocking him out of the Heisman race and the Longhorns out, out of the undefeated uh, ranks this weekend. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Uh, Texas just has too much firepower. Last year they came in here and uh, the Buffs gave them a bit of a game for a little while, but ultimately they pulled away. And, uh, you know, McCoy was too much for, for them in that game. It, it, this is kind of a scary situation. CU's going on the road again, hasn't won a game on the road since 2007, playing in a stadium with 100,000 people, uh, Heisman Trophy runner-up at quarterback last season, and Colorado's been giving up a lot of big plays on defense. And obviously the Longhorns have a lot of big playmakers on offense, so uh, it doesn't seem to bode well for the Buffs. Um, I guess in... in in my opinion, the only way to really uh, maybe come out of this with a win is is get the get the Longhorns to beat themselves. I mean, you gotta you gotta get some turnovers and uh, maybe get the Longhorns overlooking the Buffs a little bit, looking to the uh, the annual showdown with the Sooners next week in uh, in Dallas. So uh, you you mentioned that you saw Texas play at Wyoming earlier this year. What else impressed you about them? Well, the, the thing I just remember watching it live, besides Colt McCoy being as good as advertised, is their defensive line is huge and fast. <laughs> and, I mean, I know Wyoming's a poor team, but they could not sustain blocks on those guys for more than a half second. So uh, CU's offensive line um, needs to start living up to the hype a little bit and, and, and really go after this uh, Texas line because it's monstrous. Um, and obviously they have athletes all over the field. They kind of uh, feel teams like Wyoming and, and UTEP and teams like that out a little bit, and then they just start to name their score. So uh, CU is going to have to have some big plays early. You wrote a piece last week about, or maybe earlier this week, about the lack of big plays. They're going to have to hit some big plays early or it's going to be ugly early. Yeah, I'm not sure how, uh, how CU is going to come up with those big plays, particularly against this, this uh, Longhorns defense. You got to get uh, more guys with speed involved in this offense, if you ask me. That means, you know, Anthony Wright, Andre Simmons, Will Jefferson on the outside. Obviously, Daryl Scott. Uh, this is a big game for Daryl. Daryl's supposed to be uh, completely healthy, although it's early in the week here, and who knows what can happen between now and uh, game time during practice this week. But you know, for Daryl, this, this, these two teams are the teams he decided between uh, in recruiting. He sat there on national television with two hats in front of him, Texas Longhorns and Colorado Buffaloes. He ultimately chose Colorado. He had his reasons for doing that. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, things haven't worked out so well. And, and he has a lot of friends on that Texas sideline. And, and I know he talks to those guys. And I don't know if he regrets his decision at all, but I, I just think that he really wants to have a good game, uh, a hundred yard game, still looking for that, his first hundred yard uh, rushing performance in college. And I think it would be sweet. It would be a, a good story to tell, a good story to write if somehow he could manage to get that against the Longhorns. Daryl Scott is obviously a hot topic of conversation among Buffs fans. Uh, a, because he was the number one recruit, chose CU over Texas. Everyone thought that was kind of going to jumpstart Dan Hawkins' career here. Uh, hasn't played much. That's the thing that people are, are scratching their head about. Why hasn't this kid played? After the first game, the answer was, well, he, he's tweaked. He's got an injury, which 
you know, he's returning kickoffs, so I don't buy that for one second. I think the bottom line <laughs> is, at this point in his career, and let's not write him off, there's a lot of games left for him to play in college, is he, did not, he has not beaten out Rodney Stewart. That's the bottom line. Rodney Stewart right now is the best running back on the team. So I think they need to feature Rodney and find a way to, to work Daryl in. And this would be a good week to do that because uh, they offer two different styles. And if Speedy can get something going, maybe Daryl can come in and pound him a little bit. Again, you're talking about Texas's defense. You know, if they can't do that against Toledo, then, you know, what are we talking about here? But I, I, <laughs> I think the, the Daryl Scott thing is really an issue because he's the best, most highly regarded recruit they've had so far, and he hasn't played a lot. And that's an issue with this coaching staff. It doesn't seem like they always get the best players on the field together. Yeah, and, it, you know, I think that's also an issue in recruiting, or at least it can, it can be. I mean, if you're going to recruit these guys and then they come here and they don't ever get on the field, eventually other teams, other coaching staffs are going to start using that against CU coaches in recruiting. They're, they're going to be telling these guys that, you know, they're battling for in recruiting, hey, you're going to go there and you're, you're not going to get on the field or you're going to wait two, three, four years maybe to get on the field. So... Uh, I think that's a valid point. It would also be good for the Buffs uh, to somehow get a running game going. Uh, that's a tall order, obviously, against uh, this Texas defense, but it would be good to get a running game going to help Cody Hawkins. Uh, otherwise, you run into a situation again for Cody where he is basically running for his life on every play, and it's hard for any quarterback to make uh, quality decisions and quality throws under those circumstances. Uh, you know, this this is a team that, that needs maybe a, a playmaker at, at quarterback. And in these circumstances where, you know, he is running for his life and stuff, I'm not sure Cody has those abilities. 